A major drug bust in town, this after police made a search of this man's Arlington apartment. We'll tell you what police say they discovered. An Arlington nonprofit battling food insecurity talks to ACMI News. Many of us think about helping out such an organization, especially this time of year, but they'll tell you why this is always a 365 day a year effort. Arlington's International Film Festival is another major success. If you missed it, we have some previews for you. And a well-deserved honor is given to one of ACMI's best for his commitment to this treasure we are very lucky to have year after year. And hey, want to become a citizen journalist or a volunteer for ACMI News? A sneak peek at what we do here on a daily basis in the news gathering biz and how you could take part on cam or behind the scenes. Your TV station your choice. From McLennan Park to Spy Pond, from Poets Corner to the Mystic River, we have Arlington covered. We're your neighbors, a friend you can turn to. This is ACMI News. Arlington Heights could be bustling with activity if there are changes to zoning. Hello, I'm Tyler Valancourt. And I'm Eleni Caminis. That's the solution experts are offering after residents and business owners asked for a plan to boost the area over a year ago. A new committee spearheaded by the town's planning department is taking up the key points from a report by the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. They held their first meeting here at Studio A on Park Ave. The Heights consists of four zoning districts running from Forest Street to the Lexington Town Line. Economic and Development Planner Allie Carter says a specific zone district could help draw an anchor business in the future, like the theaters in the center and East Arlington. But for now, the group is focusing on growing what's already here. People care about this neighborhood. There, it's not just the downtown, which is the focus of the plan, but there are several residential neighborhoods that are underserved by this business district. And I think people want to have that sense of community and want to have a place where they can be together with their neighbors outside of their homes. Um, and so I think they see that in other parts of town and really, want to make that happen right here. Carter says to look for streetscape improvements and community events by next spring and summer. They're also in talks with the MBTA about how the town can make use of the bus terminal and, as we've been reporting, the paperwork has been filed to try bringing a tavern into the old Baelish building on Mass Ave. Police say they arrested an Arlington man for trafficking methamphetamine earlier this week. 46-year-old Joseph Theodore Ryan was taken into custody by Arlington police and members of the suburban Middlesex County Drug Task Force around 10 a.m. November 12th. This after they executed a search warrant of Ryan's Windsor Street apartment. Police reportedly seized several plastic bags and containers of methamphetamine, multiple scales, bags of blue and yellow pills, drug packaging materials, and more than $4,000 in U.S. currency. Ryan was taken into custody without incident. Arlington pays tribute to the nation's veterans this week with a parade and a wreath laying at Monument Square. Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day on November 11, 1919, the first anniversary of the end of World War I. Then, in 1938, it became a national holiday. Here are some of the sights and sounds of the way Arlington observes such a memorable day so that all of us never forget. Fuck time, march. Hold. Right face. Forward march. Left. This year, is, uh, in my opinion, is one of the biggest crowds I've had in a long time. I think so, myself. They I fell off something. quite a bit now. Some, 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 I don't know about bringing it back, but this crowd today was extra big.
The World War I armistice took place in a railway carriage in France between the Allies and Germany. The signing took place at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. There's a nonprofit in Arlington that is doing everything it can to eliminate food insecurity by providing nutritious food to any Arlingtonian in need. All services are provided free of charge and are staffed by volunteers and three staff members. In her ongoing series of Arlington nonprofits throughout our town, Shayla McHugh talks to members of this valuable organization and the great work they do 365 days a year. Arlington Eats um, has been in existence as Arlington Eats since 2014, but in 2016 we merged with the Arlington Food Pantry, which has been in existence for over 20 years and are now one big organization under the name Arlington Eats, working to address food insecurity here in Arlington. Wednesday mornings and Wednesday evenings is a market that's available for anyone in Arlington that is experiencing food insecurity. They just have to demonstrate proof of residency. That's all we look for. Um, we also, through the schools, offer snack programs at all the schools within Arlington. We offer vacation lunches on both the February, April, and summer vacations for students that might be getting free and reduced lunch through the school year, but then don't have access to that when school's out. So we provide that service as well uh, and a number of other things in the community. Yeah. Excellent. And so right now we are here at the St. John's Church, um, which how long have you been setting up shop here? That's pretty recent. I think it just past summer was when we kind of made the official transition. Um, and that is because where we were on Broadway is getting... Um, I guess you would call renovated to become a new commercial slash residential space where we will actually have a beautiful new Arlington Eats Market, hopefully within the next couple of years. But in the meantime, St. John's has graciously shared space with us so we can keep operating the market. All right, well, that's very exciting. Um, and if people want to volunteer with your organization, how can people get involved? We have weekly um, markets, obviously, morning and evening. So there's assistance needed with setting up and, and monitoring and kind of making markets flow and cleaning up afterwards. We have Greater Boston Food Bank deliveries every other Monday. So that's a lot of unloading boxes and kind of getting stock put away. There is um, set up for the markets on Tuesdays where people are kind of coming in and getting everything set up and we also accept donations on Tuesdays so we're getting boxes and bags of food that we have to go through and check expiration dates and kind of sort and shelf and then for the school-based programs there is um, obviously the vacation lunches where we need people to help with serving and prepping and kind of keeping things flowing and set up and clean up and then with the school-based programs and the snack program we have weekly groups where people can come together and help pack the snacks that we provide within that program. If you want to learn more about Arlington Eats and how you can help, just go to their website, arlingtoneats.org. You'll soon be seeing a new ACMI news promotion on air. It's a quick glimpse of what we do behind the scenes to bring you our weekly newscast. And it's also an opportunity for you to take a look at what we do here at ACMI to see if you'd be interested in taking part. After all, ACMI is your TV station. If you want to become a citizen journalist or if you'd like to help out behind the scenes at Studio A or B, stop by our station at 85 Park Ave or go to our website, acmi.tv, for more information. We'd like to thank our volunteer, Rodrigo de Sosa, for editing that great promo. There's much more ahead as ACMI News continues, including a look at Arlington's ninth annual International Film Festival this week. If you missed it, we have some snippets from the films the world over and a special honor to one of ACMI's staff members. I told my dentist my teeth are turning yellow, and he told me to wear a brown tie. Rim shot. Studio A turned into Comedy Central this week, and believe you me, it was better than that alleged joke we just told. That and more when we come back.
If you see news happening in your area and you have a smartphone, you can see it, shoot it, send it. Make sure to hold your phone horizontally and send us your video. Or share your video with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just look for ACMI News. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover key tar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. The Arlington Green team staged their second monthly climate protest earlier this week. Their message seems to be growing. Area students, parents, and climate justice advocates braved cold temperatures at the First Parish Church on Mass Ave. These protests have been held monthly ever since September's UN Climate Action Summit. The earth, the earth, the earth is on fire. Keep the carbon in the ground and cool the earth down. We're showing Arlington how much we care about the climate crisis. Um, we're, we're trying to build momentum for the environmental movement. Um, and, and we're just, we're out here in the streets taking action, doing what we know is right. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly's on fire. Hey, fossil fools, don't let grandma burn you burn. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly's on fire. Hey, fossil fools, don't let grandma burn you burn. They're out here um, advocating for, for climate justice. Um, and, you know, climate change being the existential issue that it is, um, we, we, real, we really feel that uh, it's the most important issue that we're facing right now and if we don't take action we're sort of condemning ourselves, our futures, um, our, our sort of hypothetical children's futures and uh, the future of humanity altogether. We are unstoppable, a healthy world is possible. We are unstoppable, a healthy world is possible. We are unstoppable, a healthy world is possible. So this past week actually we just started um, Sunrise Arlington. Sunrise is one of the fastest growing and most impactful uh, environmental movements in the U.S. right now. So if uh, anyone under 35 wants to get involved, um, learn some great new skills um, and hopefully make, make some tangible impact. Um, keep an eye out for Sunrise Arlington. We'll be doing posters around town. Um, we'll have social media going. Um, and it's, it's, it's a great way to get involved and make some difference. No more coal, no more oil, keep the carbon in the soil. No more coal, no more oil, keep the carbon in the soil. Dozens of Arlington residents joining in solidarity to save the planet. The ninth annual Arlington International Film Festival ran this week and it was a great success. The Film Fest promotes the understanding of the many cultures represented in Arlington and beyond. The Arlington International Film Festival is an organization dedicated to developing, promoting, and increasing multicultural awareness and understanding in our town. This year was no different. This treasure of Arlington is the perfect means of recognizing that such diversity enriches our community. If you missed it, here's a sneak peek at what this year's festival had to offer. Have a roof over your damn head. So
Alberto Guzman and April Rank, the creative founders of AIFF, say the 10th annual film festival is already in the planning stage. ACMI's own James Milan was recognized by the AIFF for his ongoing commitment to this unique festival through all nine years. A big AIFF advocate, Milan taught U.S. history for several years and is a fascinating person when you can catch him at the water cooler. He's been the Arlington International Film Festival's MC for years and he has been a fierce supporter of everything AIFF stands for. I want to take this time, every year we choose uh, a person that we want to honor that has really worked and supported us over the years. This year it is James Milan who is the Outreach Coordinator for the Arlington Community Media Inc. Um, not only has he been our MC, he has been our supporter, our advocate um, for the whole nine years. So James, would you mind coming forward? We very much appreciate uh, our affiliation with you and look uh, at a long future ahead. So thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. James received a book entitled These Truths, which asks whether the course of events since the days of Columbus has proven the nation's truths or belied them. James says, we are very fortunate to have some of the best of world cinema delivered right to our doorstep year after year. We couldn't agree more. And we congratulate him. Look, Mom, I'm on TV. Well, I am, but actually that's the name of a program we're piecing together as part of ACMI's Studio Nights. Area comedians got the chance to make their studio and TV audience laugh, guffaw, giggle, belly laugh, snicker, and of course, chortle. And ACMI News intern Harvey Kelly emceed this assemblage of frenzied mirth. Take a look. Y'all ready to laugh? Okay, let's get into it. And she got to meet with the writers of the show, and they gave her tips on how to improve her resume, uh, which is cool, but I got to be my own boss, uh, which is sweet. So you know what I put on my resume? I put Big Boss Harv, uh, which is baller. That is me. Uh, that is Sofia Vergara. And that's what we look like next to each other. <laughs> So obviously, really embarrassing for Sofia Vergara, because next to me, she looks ugly. Um, I waited till my mom was alone, and I went up to her and whispered, Mom, I think I broke my ankle. And from the other room, I heard, let me take a look at it. <laughs> so my dad came in, he took one look and went, I've got just the cure. Please don't be a glass. It's a glass of whiskey. <laughs> so uh, my freshman year of college, I was Marvelous Miss Mazeled. Uh, which basically means that the guy that I was dating stole a joke and I stood by his side anyways. <laughs> not my best moment, but also not my worst because I've been to Michigan. Because we had been riding together in silence for about seven minutes. Then I screamed and he got a notification on his phone that said he is an ambulance now. It was, it was very, he turned around, he's like, so I noticed you, uh, you, you changed your location. Everything good back there? I was like, I'm doing great. You have a great car. And keep it going for all your comedians here tonight. That was our show. Thank you so much for coming out, everyone. This has been Look Mom, I'm on TV. We'll catch you next time. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to see the program in its entirety, just go to our website, acmi.tv. The weather is turning colder, but there is still a lot going on at Arlington High School. Lots of sports action to catch up on. Let's go to Studio B with a look at this week's sports update. Take it away, Studio B.
Welcome back, Arlington sports fans, for this edition of the Sports Update. With their hot start to the season, girls' soccer never really seemed to slow down. And so far, they've showed no signs of slowing down during tournament play. Last Thursday, they beat Bill Ricca in a very close game when senior Sophie Morris scored with less than two minutes remaining in overtime. It was a cold, rainy night, but the Arlington faithful showed no fear as they showed up in mass to support their ponders. Ella, Ella sends it to Sophie, Sophie, Sophie with the ball, goal! Go, 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 go by Sophie Morris! They continued their run by getting revenge on conquered Carlisle, the team who knocked them out of the playoffs last year. The girls looked dominant, and Morris produced yet again with two free kick goals, the first from about 30 yards out and at a ridiculous angle. They'll face a tough test against Winchester, the reigning D2 state champions. They lost the first matchup against them this year, but looked much stronger in their tie in the second meeting. Girls soccer will look to get back to the state finals for the first time since 2016, where they suffered a heartbreaking loss in overtime. Kickoff is set for Sunday the 17th at 5.30, taking place at the notorious Manning Field in Lynn. That's it for this week's sports update brought to you by ACMI. I'm Nick Antonakis, back to you at Studio A. Thank you, Nick. Don't forget to stay with us for all your latest news and sports updates. That'll do it for us at ACMI News. I'm Tyler Valancourt. Thanks so much for joining us. From Studio A, I'm Eleni Kaminas. We'll see you next week. You can always check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ACMI News. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You'll find us at youtube.com slash ACMI News. If you have any news tips for us or wish to become a citizen journalist, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by ACMI Studio A at 85 Park Avenue. <laughs>